Hi, I'm Michael Novikov from North Narrabeen in Australia. Uh, four time world champion. Uh, I won my world titles in 1982, 84, 86, and then 30, what is it, uh, 31 years later in uh, 2017 in Samoa, Spain. So that was a nice little, nice little surprise uh, for me. Um, I'd just like to talk about my boards at the moment. Um, what the, the boards that I'm surfing are, are shaped, um, shaped by Dave Wood in Australia. Uh, from, they're my designs. Uh, they are machine shaped boards from plan shapes that I've had for probably 15 years now. And uh, they haven't really changed all that much. Just the bottom curves are the ones that are changing. I'm getting my boards flatter these days. I see a lot of uh, knee boards in this contest uh, have a lot of nose lift, a lot of tail lift. Uh, my boards are fairly flat and that, uh, and that equates to a lot of speed which I've, I've always found difficult to, to get in a knee board and the, really the only way that you can get the, mold, uh, the most speed out of a board is to really flatten it out. So the board has only got uh, one and a quarter inch tail lift and four inches of nose lift so very very flat to the to the middle of the board, double concave in between the fins with a V around the third fin, very standard, very standard, nice soft rails, very very hard edge too in front of the fin, so that acts as almost as another fin, as uh, the, the edge around the, the tail of the board. And uh, also on the deck, the pads, I do my own pads, just uh, EVA 75, uh, contact cement both sides, it's a three hour process actually, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite a long process, so stick the pads down, uh, cut the pads out, stick the pads down, uh, get the router out, do the, do the grooves, and uh, then get the big 230mm grinder out and then grind the edges down, so it's a real, real process, but I like them, they suit me, and, uh, and uh, the, and then I've got a, the, the, the pads are eight mil to nine mil thick. I've got a couple of different sizes, eight mil to nine mil, and the tail pad is five mil thick. And I do use a little, use a couple of things for the hands to to get up. And as you can see, I don't have any wax on the board, so it's uh, I don't really need any wax on the board. So it's um, we we like it that way. And uh, that's my surfboard. Uh, look, I've developed my surfing over, over, obviously, over the last 46 years. Um, started surfing on a blown-up surf mat, and I used to take it down to the service station and pump it up rock hard. So it, it had, it sort of felt like a proper, proper surfboard. And I used to kneel on it and paddle into, paddle into waves. And then one day, it, uh, one day the, I got a puncture in the surf mat, which was going to be inevitable. Punch it, pumping it up rock hard. And uh, it was uh, it was the start of um, second form, which is uh, year year seven at, our, at in Australia. And I thought well, it's I'd like to start surfing. All my mates are surfing. I've got a few mates down the beach that are kneeboarders, and I've been kneeling on the mat. I'm going to get a going to get a kneeboard. So I went. Uh, I got a, a board off a mate at school. He said, "I've got oh, yeah, I've got a kneeboard." And uh, come to my place. So I rode around to his place down at Warriwood Beach, and. Uh, picked the board up for two bucks. So two, my first board was two dollars and what it was, it wasn't actually a knee board, it was a cut down mal that uh, someone had reshaped and, it, and you wouldn't, it, I swear, it was in the shape of a coffin top. and had a massive skeg fin that was like this big, but it worked. And uh, it got me going and uh, you know I started I started getting getting into kneeboarding really really fast, and I started really enjoying it for this, the speed and the thrill. And uh, my first my first custom board was uh, shaped by Simon Anderson of all people, because uh, my fr I went to school with Simon Anderson's younger brother. So uh, association there was really helped my surfing through the through the time. It was a single fin energy uh, flyer flyer fishtail, fantastic board, uh, except. I got a aluminium fin box in it and pretty much our second or third surf it developed a crack around the front of the fin box and 
surf after surf they cracked up wider and wider and wider until it was sort of in, until it was almost across the across the whole board and I, and I sold it and went okay I don't have any boards and who else is who else um, can I get a board up Chris Carr, I've seen guys surfing Chris Crazier boards. So down to Monavale and got a, my first, um, second custom board from Chris Crazier. And that was a, that was a slab. Big, wide nose. Uh, five, uh, I can recall the, the measurements, five eight by 23 and a quarter. And uh, probably a 13 inch tail. And a flex tail. And that went just, that went unreal. That was just the best board. And that really, really got me into surfing. And, uh, and, uh, and then, as I was say, saying to the, at the, uh, uh, the other night with the board discussion, uh, Peter Crawford saw me surfing out in the north. He surfed north a lot. And uh, he said, next time we go down and, and, and see Chris Crozier, he'll, uh, you know, they'll, he'll, he'll do your board for a really, really good price. So, so I was excited. And straight down, I'm going to get straight away, going to get another board. And... Uh, so yeah, so he did me a, a really, really good deal, and so I was sort of semi-sponsored, and um, and then started to pull my uh, from the white tail, started to pull the tail in. So instead of having the big wide square tail, started to really bring the tail in, and that changed my surfing as well, having the narrower tail, because I, I I really like really like to surf like a stand-up surfer. I didn't really want to surf like a kneeboarder, slow and big, you know, floaters off the lips. I wanted to hack off the top and, and come around and do big roundhouse cutbacks and, and which generally sink the rail and be able to sink the tail as well. And, um, but it was very difficult but on a single fin. Your board would slide out all the time. You know, big, big, long, raking single fin. Uh, so, you know, that, was, that sort of held you back. Twin fins came in about 1979, 1980, and uh, I started surfing a couple of couple of uh, twin fins in between the single fins. So twin fin, single fin, and you know, sort of very un- indecisive about which bo- type of board I like. And then came 1981, where Simon Anderson showed up down the beach one day at North Narrabeen with a, with a third fin in his board. He was surfing twin fins as well. All the stand-up surfers were surfing the twin fins. He put a stabilizer in the middle of the twin fins. There, we went. What's that going to do? He said, I don't know. I'm going to give it a go right now. And I watched his first ever surf on a tri-fin. And you know, a fantastic surfer. But he just drew the most cleanest lines. And it just it driving so fast off the bottom. And we waited until he came in. And he said, this goes unreal. And, I, and you wouldn't believe it. It was pretty much straight away. I went down, because I was working for Craig McDonald at a Wee and E's down at 236 Harbord Road, which was a, a kneeboard factory. It had been a kneeboard factory for probably 10 years. And uh, Craig, we've got, to, we've got to put a third fin on the board. What do you mean, the third fin? I've just seen it. I've just seen it. I don't know what he, don't know what they call it. It's just a just chuck a third fin in the middle here, in between the... In between the, the, the um, the two side fins. So we chucked the fin box in down here. Um, got a fin happening pretty much straight away. We were working in a surfboard factory. It's pretty easy to do. That and I was I was out surfing it within probably three hours. Surfing the board with a brand new box and a new fin in it with a third fin. And the first wave that I took off on it was a left, and I and I took off and it just felt really really tight. And I'm going, oh my god, I can't turn this board. But then as I got to the bottom. I just turned off the bottom and it just sprung and it just flew straight off the bottom and it wanted to go to the lip. It wanted to head straight up to the lip. I'm just going, on. this is just amazing. And, you know, within, by the end of the surf, I was used to the tightness of the board, but the, also the looseness as well. So it wanted to come off the lip as well. And, uh, you know, it just, it just helped my surfing straight away. And, and you know, and then I, I was developing a, also a 360 off the lip at that time on my single fin, but it was kind of pretty hard to do. But the, tr- the thruster really, with the drive off the bottom on right handers, I could just fly off the bottom and just be heading straight for the lip and just hit the lip and just keep going with the speed from the, uh, from the bottom of the board. And uh, so they were easy, they were easy to make then with the, with the thruster. And um, so this was, uh, you're talking, as I said, 1981. Uh, and then you know, I'm surfing in a, quite a few contests and uh, qualified for the Australian team in 1982 to go to the first ever world titles that kneeboards were involved in. And uh, still going? Yeah. And uh, 
at those at those world titles, uh, it was it was fantastic to see there was kneeboarders from from quite a few countries. And look, we had probably four we had four solid heats in that in that event. There was two kneeboarders from Australia, two from America, uh, New Zealand. Uh, yeah, so we're at the World Titles on the Gold Coast in 1982, and uh, many, many countries um, in, involved, and uh, it was a fantastic experience. But um, one of the American surfers, Bill Sharp, did, he made the final. Um, it was uh, myself, the other Australian, Neil Luke, a Hawaiian, and Bill Sharp. And I can't remember the Hawaiian name. Um, and in the final, Bill Sharp did a barrel roll in the final. He, he did the big flip, but it landed on his stomach. So the judges, the judges deemed it incomplete. And uh, but we we, um, we were at the, at a, the all the competitors were staying at um, the Talabudgera Fitness Camp, which is just behind Burley. And and there in the on the main road there is the playroom, which was a, a, a music venue. So we that was we'd go there every night because it was within walking distance, and that's where the presentation was. And then they showed they showed the day, the day's final surfing before the presentation started, and they showed and and Bill's um, barrel roll was was shown, and the whole crew, the whole audience, just erupted like in cheers, and you know they're, they're, no one had no one had seen anything like that, and, uh, and that inspired me to do to go for barrel rolls, and. Uh, as I said, I did my first one at, um, at Point Magoo and I uh, just kept working on them and uh, working on them all the time. So, you know, at, at that stage in my surfing, I was, I was probably making, you know, one out of every three or four that I attempted. And it's just the most fantastic feeling, coming, flying off the bottom on a left-hander, heading straight for the lip, and you just, you know, that that's what the manoeuvre that you want to do. You're hanging on at both rails, flying off the bottom, and you hit the lip and you just keep going and you, you're hanging on to your board you're making sure that the board doesn't get away from you and uh, coming down over with the lip and you, it's surprisingly soft landing when you when you get to the bottom it's you know the lip the lip actually um, breaks the surface and you, and you come down with the lip and you can actually drive out of the turn and it's a, as I said the most fantastic feeling um, still attempting it to this day <laughs> at this age.